Okay, these are the problems for Lex lesson 33. This is the lesson about uh, vector value functions. So it means I give you a parameter or I give you the input t and from the t, from the input, you create the output and the output is a vector. So the input is t, the output is r of t, that is a vector. So we have to explain uh, these 10 problems. Let's go to, to start. Okay, the first problem say find the domain of the vector value function r of t equal 1 divided by t minus 2i plus natural log of tj. So this, when you take uh, an input, let's say t equal 3, you have a vector. And the vector, when you take the input 3, is 1 divided by 3 minus 2, i plus natural log of 3, j. For every t, you find a vector. Uh, what is the domain? Well, t must be different than zero, for sure, because division by zero is not allowed. One, if I plug in t equal two, t must be different than two, sorry, different than two. And why is that? Because if I plug in two here, two minus two is zero, one divided by zero is not defined. Also, t should be different than zero. Why? Because natural log of zero is not defined. So for all t, the vector value function is defined. So for example, let's go to make a draw of r of one. Who is r of one? r of one is when t equal one. So it will be one divided by one minus two i plus natural log of 1j. And which vector is this one? This is the vector 1 divided by 1 minus 2 is minus 1, so it will be r of 1, I write it here, r of 1 will be minus 1i or minus i plus natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is 0 plus zero j. So the vector at t equal one is minus i, is this vector, minus i. <coughs> what happens as the time goes? At t equal three, the vector is this one, one, three minus two is one, is one i, one i, plus natural log of three j. A natural log of 2 is 0 0.6. A natural log of 3 will be maybe around 1. So the vector will be 1i plus, one, plus natural log of 3j. Oh, which one is the vector? The vector is this one. So it means that we have a star at t equal 1 with this vector. And af after the time pass, at t equal 3, we are in this, the vector is here. What happened at t equal 2? The vector is not defined. What happened at t equal 0? The vector is not defined. What happens when t goes to the infinity? When t goes to the infinity, 1, t very, very large, 1 divided by infinity is 0, and the natural law of uh, something very big is a something very big. So the vector r at the infinity will be 0 for the x component and very big for the y component. So the vector would be something like this, 
very, 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 very large. Only J company. Only J company. Okay. Very, very, very large vector. Uh, so the vector starts here at t equal 1. At t equal 3, this is this vector. At t equal 2 is not defined. And at t equal infinity, the vector is this big vector. So it means that between t equal 3 and t equal very large time, the vector maybe is doing like this. It's doing like this. For times t greater than 3, maybe this is t equal 4, you can calculate. OK. So the problem to find the domain is clear. It's clear. The domain has to be different than 2, different than 0. Let's go to the next problem. Now we have to evaluate the vector value function at certain times t, t equal 1 and t equal minus 2. Um, what is the domain? The domain of this vector value function is all t, from t equal minus infinity. The domain is from t minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So what is r of 1? r of 1 is 1 square i plus 1 minus 1 j. Or in other words, r of 1 is 1 i plus 0 j. Or in the picture is the vector 1 i. This vector 1 with length 1. Uh, what is r of minus 2? r of minus 2 is when t equal minus 2. And when t equal minus 2 is minus 2 square i plus 2 minus 1 j. Or in other words, the vector r, when the time t is minus 2, is 4i plus 1j. And if you see, if you want to graph this vector, is the vector that have 4i, 4i, let's go to the, so it will be like this, it will be something like this, okay, so 4i, 1, 2, and four, four i, and one j. One j will be something like this. So this is the vector four i plus one j. And what is the vector four i plus one j? Is this vector, this vector. And this is happening when t equal minus two. And when t equal one, the vector, we saw that the vector is 1i. So the vector, because the time, we imagine the time coming from smaller to growing up, so from t equal minus 2, we can imagine that the position of the object was here, and at t equal 1, the position is this one, is i, t equal 1. So at t equal 1, this is the vector position. At t equal minus 2, this is the vector position. So meanwhile, t minus 2, there are times like t minus 1, t equals 0. And the vector is, uh, for example, for t equals 0, the vector will be plugging 0 here, will be 0, will be minus 1j minus 1j, this is the vector, minus 1j, at t equal 0. At t equal 0. So the object is doing a motion. Um, 
is describing a path. How I will know what is the path? Well, I know that from what they say me that r of t is t square i plus t minus 1j. This is what they say, t square i plus t minus 1j. I know that x of t is t square. And y of t is t minus 1. So t is 1 plus, is i plus 1. Mm. So x of t is t square, but t square is y plus 1. So x of t should be the graph of y plus 1 square. And what is this graph? Well, if you represent numbers, <coughs> points, uh, you can see that when y equals 0, x equals 1. When y equals 0, you are here, so the x equals 1. When y equals 1, you are here. When y equals 1, the x is 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so the point is here. The point is here. When y equal a 2, so when y equal 2, you are here. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 squared is 9, the x is 9. So it looks that the graph will do like this, something like this. Something like this, something like this. It's a parabola, okay? Um, how is, in what way the particle is moving? Is moving in this direction or is moving coming from here? Mm, let's go to see it. When t, the parametric equation that we have, is that x of t is t square and y of t is t minus 1. Let's say that the x, the x, the t is uh, 1. So if the t is 1, or the t is 0, if t is 0, the x is 0 and the y is minus 1. Where are you at t equal 0, at the position x equal 0, y equal minus 1? You are here at time t equal 0. Mm. What happened at time t equal 1? At time t equal 1, the x is t squared, is 1 squared, is 1. And the y is 0. So at t equal 1, you are here, exactly here. So the vector r of t is coming at t equals 0 from here, from here, and at t equal 1 from here. <coughs> and the trajectory is coming in this direction, in this direction this direction is the particle is moving in this direction so parametric equations have more information than just a pure graph like x of t equal y plus one square okay so that's all now the following problems say describe the curve represented by a vector value function and the vector value function is r of t r of t equal t i plus t minus 1j. And what is the, the, the curve that represents this vector value function? And it say indicate the orientation. So dx of t is t. 
the y of t is t minus 1. So the y of t is t minus 1, but t is the x, so it's x minus 1. So the graph is y of x equal x minus 1. We can represent this is the x, this is the y. When x equals 0, y equal minus 1. When x equal 1, y equals 0, and the rectilinear line here is this one, this one. Now the question is, what is the orientation of this graph? Is the object moving in this direction, or is moving in the opposite direction? So to know that, we can evaluate r of 0 for t equals 0. For t equals 0, r of 0 is 0i zero minus 1j. 0i zero minus 1j is from t equals 0, it will be this vector. This vector. So the object is exactly here at t equals 0. Now, at t equals 1, it may be possible that the object is through here or through here. We will find where is the object. At t equal 1, r of 1 will be 1i plus 0j. Wow, 1i plus 0j is this vector. 1i plus 0j is this vector. So, and this happened at t equal 1. So at t equals 0, the object was here, at this point, at this position. And later on, and later on, the object moved to this position. And later on, we move to this position, to this position. And the vector r will be changing. Okay, let's go to the next problem. Okay, on this problem they say, describe the curve represented by the vector value function r of t equal cosine of ti plus 2 times sine of tj and indicate the orientation. The orientation is very important, is how the object will move. So, r of t is x of t i plus y of t j. From the comparison with the r of t, like cosine of t i plus 2 times sine of t j, we know that the x of t will be cosine of t. The y of t equal 2 times sine of t. So the x of t will be cosine of t, and y divided by 2 will be sine of t. To mix the x with the y, we use the fundamental trigonometric relation of Pythagoras' theorem that say that sine is square of t plus cosine squared of t is 1. This is Pythagoras' theorem. What is sine of t? Sine of square of t is y divided by 2 squared. What is cosine of t? It's x. What is cosine squared of t? x squared. Equal 1. So I have the equation y squared divided by 4 plus x squared divided by 1 equal 1. And this is the equation of an ellipse. And the ellipse have a semi-axis in the y direction, that is 4, and in the x direction is 1, so the ellipse can be represented like this ellipse. In the x is 1, minus 1, 4, minus 4, and the ellipse should be something like this. So the R of t 
Start at what position? When t equals 0, when t equals 0, cosine of 0 is 1, and r of t is x of t i plus y of t j. When t equals 0, sine of 0 is 0 plus 0. So the initial time t equals 0, the position vector is the one i, is this one. Okay, what happened at t equal 1? At t equal 1, or oh, let's go to put t equal pi divided by 2 seconds. Something like 1.7 seconds, 3.14 divided by 2, something t equal pi divided by 4. What is the x at this time pi divided by 2 is cosine of pi divided by 2. Cosine of pi divided by 2 is 0. What is the y of pi divided by 2? y divided by pi 2 is sine of pi divided by 2 is 1. Multiplied by 2 is 2. So the position is r of t equal 0 i plus 2 j. And where is in the graph this position? Well, in the graph, because I made a mistake drawing the graph, because this is not 4. Let's go to chain D4. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The ellipse have the semi myorexis is square root is 2. And minus 2 and 1 and minus 1. So this is the ellipse. Okay. Let's go to draw it again. So it's, it's 1, minus 1, 1, and 2, minus 1, and minus 2, so the ellipse does like this. Sorry. Yes. So minus 2, like this. So at t equal pi divided by 2, the vector position is exactly here. So what is the orientation? Well, the orientation is counterclockwise. It moves in this direction. You are moving in a ellipse in the counterclockwise direction. And this is the problem. Let's go to the next one. Okay, the next problem is something similar. It's uh, the r of t is x of t, the x is 3 secant theta, and the y is 2 tangent theta. And it says, uh, describe the curve represented by this vector value function, and also you can find the orientation of the curve. So let's go to do it. So to do this problem, we have to remember that secant square of theta minus tangent square of theta is equal, secant square of theta is 1 divided by cosine square of theta minus tangent square of theta is sine square of theta divided by cosine square of theta. They have common denominators so they have 1 minus sine square of theta divided by cosine square of theta. But 1 minus cosine square of theta is cosine square of theta divided by cosine square of theta. This is 1. So what I have said is that secant square of theta minus tangent square of theta is 1. So we will use this to solve this problem. So the x of t, the x of t is 3 secant theta. The y of t is 2 tangent theta. So the x divided by 3 is secant.
Cantita. And the Y divided by 2 is Tangentita. And I know how to relate the secant with the tangent. I know that secant square of theta minus tangent square of theta is equal to 1. Let's go to put this information here. Secant square of theta will be x divided by 3 squared. x divided by 3 squared, which is secant square of theta, minus tangent square of theta, minus y divided by 2 squared. This is equal to 1. So as a conclusion, we have x squared divided by 9 minus y squared divided by 4 equal 1. And this is the equation of an hyperbola. I leave you to guess when theta grow, when theta, theta could be t also, the time t. When theta grows, in what direction the hyperbola is performed? So I leave you two things. Draw this hyperbola and see the orientation of the hyperbola. Problem 6 say represent the plane parametrize this curve. This is what it say. Parametrize this curve. You find a vector value function that describes the curve that is a circle of radius 5. So I have a circle of radius 5, this is 5, and this is minus 5, center at the origin, and I want to represent the curve like a vector value function. So I want the R moving through the curve, through the curve. The R should be minus 5i, the R should be here minus 5j and 0i when it's here, so the vector value function is, indicate, is indicating how the object is moving. So if it's moving in this direction, I can do the following thing. This is the vector r, this one. This is the x, and this is the y. And this is the theta. This is what it would help me to parameterize the curve. So the x is the magnitude of r by cosine of theta. And the y is the magnitude of r by sine of theta. But the r is 5, is the radius. Cosine of theta equals 5 sine of theta. So I have two equations. The first equation say that 5 cosine of theta is the x, and the second equation say that 5 sine of theta is the y. So I will use the, the Pythagoras theorem or the fundamental trigonometric relation that say that cosine of square of theta plus sine square of theta, sorry, e divided by 5, plus sine square of theta will be 1. So, x divided by 5, cosine square of theta, plus y divided by 5 square, which is sine square of theta, this is 1. Oh, but this is the equation of the circle. What it asking me is, who is the parametric equation? The parametric equation is here, x of theta, is 5 cosine of theta, and y of theta equal 5 sine of theta. And the r of theta, the vector r, the parametric equation of this curve, is x of theta, 5 cosine of theta i, plus y of theta, 5 sine of theta j. So this is the final answer. The parametric equation for this circle is these two equations, and the vector value function that depends on theta is this vector value function. And this vector value function, um, it describes a circle. When theta grows, when theta equals 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so it's 5i plus 0j. 
when theta equal pi divided by two, cosine of pi divided by two is zero, side the pi in sine of pi divided by two is one. So the object is moving counterclockwise. It's moving in the circle counterclockwise. Problem seven say find the limits when t goes to the infinity of this vector value function. The vector value function R of t is e minus t i plus 2 t squared divided by t squared plus 1 j. When t goes to infinity, e minus t goes to 0. So the vector r at the infinity is 0i plus when t goes to infinity, the limit when t goes to infinity of 2t squared divided by t squared plus 1 is equal, if I divide numerator and denominator by t squared, it will be t squared divided by t squared plus 1 divided by t squared. And now taking the limit when t goes to infinity, 1 divided by infinity goes to 0. This approach to 1, and this approach to 1, so the limit is 2. So what is the final answer? That the vector, the vector r at the infinity is 0i plus 2j is the vector 2j. Now let's go to do problem number 8. Find the first and the second derivative of the vector value function. So we have r of t, which is x of t i plus y of t j. And what is r prime of t? r prime of t is the derivative of r respect to the t. And what is that? Is the derivative of x respect to the ti plus the derivative of y respect to the tj. And say um, the second derivative. The second derivative is the derivative respect to the t of the first derivative of the derivative of r respect to the t. And this is named like the second derivative of the vector position respect to t squared. And this would be the second derivative of x respect to the ti plus the second derivative of y respect to the tj. This is named the vector velocity, the change in position per unit of time. And this is the acceleration and it's nothing else than the derivative respect to the t or the vector position velocity, because v is the derivative of r respect to the t. So let's go to do the problem. Uh, what is the derivative of r of t is now t cube i plus minus 3tj. So the x of t is clearly t cube. The y of t is minus 3t. And the derivative of x respect to the t is 3t squared. And the derivative of y respect to the t is minus 3. So the vector velocity, the vector derivative of r respect to the t is the derivative of x respect to the t. 3t squared i plus the derivative of y respect to the tj, minus 3j, minus 3j. So this is the first derivative of the vector value function. And the second derivative, we make the derivative of v. a is the derivative of v respect to the t. So a is the derivative respect to the t of the vector v. The vector v is 3t squared i minus 3j. What is the derivative of 3t squared? 3t squared, the derivative is 60i minus 0j. So the acceleration is 60, 60i. It's changing with time, the acceleration. OK, this is the solution to the problem. Now, problem 9 say find the first 
derivative of the vector value function r of t is equal to 4 cosine of ti plus 4 sine of tj. We know that the description of this vector value function is a circle of radius 2 um, is going counterclockwise. So the r of t is 4 cosine of t i plus 4 sine of t j. And the x of t is 4 cosine of t. And the y of t is 4 sine of t. And the derivative of x respect to the t is 4 minus sine of t. And the derivative of y respect to the t is 4 times cosine of t. As a conclusion, the vector velocity v is the vector minus 4 cos minus 4 sine of ti plus 4 cosine of tj. So if you represent this vector, first of all, you will find that the object is performing a trajectory that is a circle of radius 2. So this is minus 2. And um, if you, if you, for example, if you take r at the time 0, at the time 0, what is the object? Well, if plug in t equals 0 here, you will find 3 cosine of 0 is 1, 4 cosine of 0 is 1, 4 i. 4 i. So, uh, sorry that the circle is a circle of radius 4. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's a circle of radius 4. The description is a circle of radius 4. So, this is the circle. When, R, when t equals 0, the r of 0 is 4i, because sine of 0 is 0. When t equal pi divided by 2, the r of pi divided by 2 is cosine of pi divided by 2 is 0, is 4, sine of pi divided by 2 is 4 j. So the object start here, start here, for i, this is 4, um, at t equal pi divided by 2, the object. Now we have a vector value function. The vector value function is r of t. r of t is the vector r of t is 1 divided by ti plus secant square of tj. So this is the vector value function that is not defined at t equals 0. And, um, and the last problem say to evaluate the integral of a certain function, let's say that is r of t, so if the integral of r of t d d t. So r of t will be 1 divided by ti plus secant square of t j. So it's a vector value function. It's not defined at t equals 0, and it's not defined when uh, secant square is 1 divided by cosine of theta, so 1 divided by cosine of t. So when t equal pi divided by 2 is not defined, for example. So they say, may do the integral r of t d dt. So the integral of r, dt, of r of t d dt is the integral of x of t d dt plus the integral of y of t, y of t d dt. So the j and the i are vectors that they are not changing. So I can put it like, a, like it, 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 if they are constants. So I can put it outside of the integral, the i and the j, and integrate the integral of x of t d d t and the integral of y of t d d t. If I do this, the integral of 1 divided by t is natural log of absolute value of t. And the integral of secant square of t is tangent t. 
So the result will be that mm, the, the, the integral will be natural log of ti plus tangent of tj plus a constant vector c. c is a vector that it depends on the initial condition. So this is the integral of this vector value function.